So in this message, we're going to look at the word imagination. And by, I hope by the end of the message, you'll understand how Satan is using the imagination to actually prepare the way for the Antichrist. Um, first of all, let's look at the definition of the word imagination, the faculty or action of forming new ideas or images or concepts of external objects not present to the senses. Um, now let's let's look at some scriptures, what God says about this word imagination. And I was very uh, intrigued. I, I, I couldn't believe that the word imagination only is 14 times in the Bible. So it's important, I think, to look up each of these words and see what the Bible says about the imagination. First verse of Scripture we're going to look at is Genesis chapter 6, verse 5. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every, every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Now, the word imagination, it, uh, it means to form figuratively of conception, purpose, uh, to frame uh, the mind. Um, but I think the word we really want to focus on here is the word conception. It's the same word we get when a child is conceived. So, these ideas that are that are being conceived and 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 are being um, played out uh, in our world today, um, they have to start with a seed, just like a baby starts as a seed in conception. And so, even as God uh, plant seeds in us through his word, so the devil um, gives ideas and thoughts that are seeds, that start out as a seed. And so there are people in this world today that are literally incubators for these seeds from Satan. And they are literally conceiving um, the plan of, uh, of Satan. And carrying it out. And I don't know altogether if they even realize they are. I think in a lot of cases, uh, I was recently looking at this movie, Jupiter Ascending, and I realized after listening to the directors and listening to their ideas and how they came up with the movie and such, I found after listening to the actors that the actors were really kind of oblivious to... Uh, really what they were playing out, what they were acting out in the movie. And I realized they're just doing their job and they're just looking at it from the aspect of um, it's something new, it's something interesting, but they don't understand the evil that is behind the uh, inspiration of the movie. And I don't think from listening to the directors I don't think they even understand altogether the ideas that they are turning into movies. And I did hear that um, that one of the directors actually say that they were trying to get as evil as possible. And that they were trying to um, see in the movie how they could portray how taking over the youth. And you understand that in the movie... It has to do with a harvest and a reaping of the earth. And so I believe that God showed me that this is all preparation to make the world believe when the church is raptured that they were literally uh, harvested by aliens. Um, they asked one of the act they asked the main actress in the movie, they asked her the question if she was interested in UFOs and aliens and if she thought there was 
uh, other life out there in, in, in the universe. And, and, and she said she believed there was. And so um, also I found that she is actually Russian. She was uh, Her parents are Russian. And I'm not sure altogether why they chose her. Uh, I think it also had to do with the fact she was a Russian um, because we know Russia will have a big part in what the the playing out of, of the, uh, uh, the prophecy in the scripture. But I don't want to get off on a tangent. I really want to focus and stay focused on this word imagination so you can understand how the devil works. Okay? He works through the imagination. Remember, this is the place of conception. This is the place where things, where ideas and thoughts are framed, where they are formed, uh, where literally you take a, a thought and make it what the world would call reality. Now, they would like you to think that movies are reality because they've taken it from the, the stage of a thought which is not physical. And now they have brought it into physical. See, they're playing, they think they're playing God. They think that they're literally shaping and, and molding um, uh, uh, the people, the masses uh, are being shaped and molded. And they are, folks. They're, if you are literally um, become subjective to a movie, to where you come under the influence of it, and you literally begin to feel the energy of that movie, you are literally being programmed, you're being shaped, you're being formed into, listen, into the image of the beast. Do you realize that? The more you begin to believe uh, the inspiration and the ideas and thoughts that are conceived, this conception that takes place in these directors, that takes place in these writers. You understand that this inspiration is coming from Satan. He is the one that's giving them these ideas. He's the one that's giving them these thoughts. And so, this is very serious because listen to what it says here in Genesis chapter 6, verse 5 again. It says, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Are you listening, folks? Now let's read a few more verses. And the Lord smelled a sweet savor, and the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground any more for man's sake, for the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth, neither Will I again smite it any more, everything living as I have done? That doesn't mean he's not going to destroy the earth with fire. He's talking about the flood. He will never flood the earth again as he did in that day. Because uh, God's not going to destroy the earth and then uh, have, you know, where the water subsides and then, and then uh, there's civilization again. God's not going to do that. What God's going to do is he's going to completely remove the old world, the old earth. Now, the earth itself, I don't believe, will completely be gone and then God will make a new earth. I think what's going to happen is that God is going to completely uh, cleanse the earth with fire. That the earth will be completely, the, the heavens, the earth, everything, the elements, everything will be completely, uh, uh, how do I want to say it? It'll be, um, it'll be cleansed. It'll be purified. It's going to go through a purification. Uh, our God is a consuming fire. And if you ever looked at when you take brown grass and you light it on fire, and when it grows back, it grows back greener and more luscious. And that's what God's going to do on the earth. He's going to literally, uh, really, he's going to use the, the very earth that's being burned, he's going to use as fertilizer for the new earth. It's just beautiful. And God's going to do that. Um, but again, not getting off on a tangent, but understand what's happening here, folks. 
The world is being destroyed today by the imagination of man because the ideas and thoughts that are turning into GMO products that are destroying our ozone layer, that are in, involved in, in genetically modified, we already said that, and involved in, in, in uh, robots and, um, you know, all the different, like aerosols, um, chemtrails, all these things that are going on today that man has been inspired by Satan to bring on the earth are not making it better. GMO products are not making it better. Uh, these, um, you know, streams from behind jets that are leaving chemtrails and, and chemicals into our atmosphere and metals into our atmosphere and destroying the ozone layer, which is our only shield to protect us from the harmful rays of the sun. Man is literally destroying himself. He's literally destroying himself. And I'll tell you why he's doing that. Because he's so proud that um, he thinks that he is able to be God. He thinks that he's able to make things better than they already are. Well, listen, how can you make something better if there's no way to make it better? God made it the best. When God created the heavens and the earth, you can't make it better than that. God is the perfectionist. He's the one that's perfection. He's the one that does everything to its absolute perfection. In fact, when you and I were created, the Bible says we were fearfully and wonderfully made. Now, you don't have to look very far than your own body to see that you was fearfully and wonderfully made and that, you know, beyond genius, right? The design of just the body itself. Think about it, folks. And man wants to come along and say, well, we don't want man and woman to procreate anymore. We want to be able to learn how we can actually uh, create human beings from nanotechnology. That's how sick, that's how dis demented, that's how uh, depraved that the mind can become when uh, Satan begins to, uh, con when you begin to conceive and become an incubator of the ideas and thoughts of a psychopath, of a, of, uh, of, a, of a being, an entity called Satan that is so absolutely uh, psychopathic that he literally, his name, Satan, he is a destroyer, folks. And that's all he knows how to do. Have you ever seen, like when you're a young person, I know I did this, you, you take apart maybe a radio or something, and you can never get it back together again. Or if you get impatient and you're taking something apart and you destroy it in the process, I've done that. Uh, and that's our, that's our nature. That's the fallen nature. And that's Satan's nature. He's a destroyer. Okay? And I think what's going to happen as we find uh, human nature becoming more and more unrest and more uh, anxious and more troubled and more in a hurry, um, I think we're going to see more destruction. And without question, the atom bomb, uh, Einstein never, never, uh, never even, I don't think it ever came into his mind from what I understand that he ever wanted a t an atom bomb, that he, that he wanted the information that he gave to man to become a bomb that would d wipe out, you know, hundreds of thousands of people. Um, but understand that, um, when this information is given to into the wrong hands, then there's destruction. And there's no question about it. It's going to be destruction. And right now, Israel and the United States and everybody around the world is concerned about Iran getting a nuclear bomb right now. Could you imagine what would happen with people uh, that are really not people? Uh, these these leaders of Iran and and the mindset and the thinking and the way they think is absolutely barbaric at best. And the Bible calls them brute beasts. They're literally, they're not, they're not they don't have the absolute, they, do, they actually don't have the capacity to reason. Can you imagine? Can you imagine meeting up to somebody that has no capacity to reason, has no empathy whatsoever, 
Can you see why Benjamin Netanyahu is is very concerned about his people? Can you see why he's concerned? Do you do you see why he came to the United States even though he wasn't welcomed by the, our own president? Do you see how serious the hour really is? And yet he never came across in his speech with with um with some kind of anxiousness where it wasn't reality, where people would feel some kind of emotion. No, he just gave the facts. He just said exactly the way it is. And it's sad because we have a president today in this country that um, does not want to admit that we are in trouble and that Israel is in trouble. Um, I just recently heard that, um, that, um, the CEO of Facebook and also um, CEO of Microsoft or the owner of, of Microsoft, Bill Gates, that both of them are now reading a book um, of a um, and, and telling everybody in the world they should read it. And it is all about the fact that things are getting better. That's what the book is about in a nutshell, that um, crime and, and uh, you know, evil and wickedness and it is not is not getting worse. It's getting better. That the murder rate's going down and and when you have that kind of mentality, that you're not willing to admit the truth, that you're not willing to. Ad- I mean, you're so bent on believing a lie and making others believe a lie. You don't want people to believe that the world's in trouble. So you keep feeding them a lie. Everything's getting better. You know, folks, things aren't getting better. That's a lie. And when you have a president that's not willing to say that it's radical, uh, the radical Muslims, uh, the ideology that's behind all the killings and the beheadings, is Islam. It is Islam. They are Muslims, but they are so extreme that they want to take over the whole earth, over, over the whole world. Um, I I don't know altogether why Obama won't admit, other than the fact that he's a Muslim himself, um, but I think he wants it to continue. I think he wants the killings to continue. I think he wants the beheadings to continue. And I think we're seeing the rise of the beast uh, from out of the sea. And the sea speaks of the people. I think we're seeing the rising of of the beast today. And I think we're seeing it through this ideology, through this Muslim ideology. Um, And I think we're seeing Ouroboros. I think we're seeing the the, the snake eating its own head. When we see ISIS destroying uh, not uh, Nimrud, but Nimrod, we're seeing... Nimrod being destroyed by, by why would Nimrod be destroyed by Muslims? Muslims believe in Nimrod. They believe in rebellion. They believe in Babylon. So why would they destroy their own artifacts or, or, or their own history? It's because the snake is eating its own tail. They believe the cycle of life that the old has to go out and the, for the new to come in. They are willing to completely eradicate and destroy the whole earth. They really believe order comes out of chaos. So they've got to bring the whole earth back to chaos. You don't think they believe that way? Well, why would they blow themselves up? Why would they strap bombs on themselves? We're talking about an ideology here, folks. How can you fight against uh, an idea or a thought where people are willing to literally blow themselves up? How can you fight that? I mean, it would be more simpler to deal with a, 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 an idea or a thought of people that, you know, are, are concerned about their life. You know, I don't want to die. But we're not dealing with people that are afraid to die. We're dealing with people that have no value for life, not even their own life, that believe that they're doing God's service, folks. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? The Muslims today are following, without question, they're following in the footsteps of the beast. If you look up what the word uh, curse in the Bible, in the book of Zechariah, the curse that goes out over all the earth, that word curse is the word Allah, okay? And so ISIS today, or what's being called is now, IS, which is the Islamic State, 
they literally are, uh, without question, prophecies being fulfilled. This is the curse that's going out over all the earth right now. Listen, folks, Isis, the queen of heaven, uh, Venus, Juno, whatever you want to call it. There's so many different names for the same entity. It's nothing more than Satan. That's what it is behind it all. It's the devil. And he tries to confuse the world by having so many different metaphors and so many different titles and so many different labels. But it's all the same devil behind all those labels, behind all those different uh, religions and all those different ideologies and all those different uh, um, secret societies. All of it behind its is the devil, is the dragon, is Satan. And the two only the only two figures that we really need to focus on is the Antichrist and the false prophet. Other than that, the rest are just pawns. They're they're just uh, part of you know the means to an end. And they're serfs. They're um they're uh you know they're pawns. They're pawns in the in, in the whole scheme of things. Um, they're just pawns in Satan's plan. And I don't care how high they get on the on the uh, pedestal or how high they get on the pyramid. Even if they get all the way to the top of the pyramid, they're still not going to be any more than a pawn in the eyes of the Satan because Satan um, is a psychopath. And he is depicted as this snake eating its own tail. Um total destruction total destruction and so anybody that begins to get thoughts and ideas from satan is going to become destructive all right the movies today that are coming out the music everything is geared to destruction it's all geared and you even hear them saying um even in the music industry that they're looking for the dark side they want something dark they enjoy something coming in the music, in the sound, in the feeling that's dark. See, they're not interested in that which is beautiful. Uh, they, they're not interested in something that's innocent anymore. They're looking for that dark. They like that dark feeling that, that, that uh, you know, you get hypnotized or you get into sensuality and it gets dark because that's the fallen nature. That's the nature of the beast. And so you can't just give your imagination over to anything, folks. That's the whole idea of this message I'm sharing with you right now, is you've got to guard yourself. You can't be a free thinker. You can't just let thoughts and ideas come into your mind and you just uh, don't address them. The scripture says that we, if we think on anything, think on these thoughts, right? And also it says that we are to cast down imaginations and thoughts that exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. That's you and I. That's our responsibility. Do we have something to do in the whole scheme of things? Yes, we absolutely do. We have the responsibility of guarding our own minds. Amen. We have the responsibility to make sure that impure thoughts and uh, high thoughts and ideas do not come in and begin to... Uh, in, begin to grow within us that seeds that get in and begin to become uh, weeds you know in our own hearts and our own lives because if you understand we're a garden we're the lord's garden but the devil wants his evil seeds to get sown into our hearts and that they begin to produce even evil fruit so we've got to continually weed the garden of our heart. We've got to continually be watching over our hearts and watching over our minds and making sure that we keep our hearts clean, keep our hearts pure, and we don't entertain these ideas and thoughts that come from Satan. Does that make sense? I think that this is uh, profound. I think what I'm presenting, what what the Lord is helping us to see and the presentation of this message right now is so profound and I think it is so important and I think if we will listen, if we will take heed that we will uh, not be one in this hour where Satan is setting his kingdom up in our hearts and our minds. Just as Satan is setting up his kingdom in the hearts and minds of the world, 
Jesus Christ is setting up his kingdom through a seed, folks. It's all through a seed. Just like uh, Jesus, uh, the good seed, Satan sows the evil seed. He sows the bad seed, folks. That's what Jesus said. There's two different seeds being sown today. Are you listening? And Jesus said the seed that he sows, he said it will bring forth some 30, some 60, and some hundredfold. Satan is sowing bad seed. He's sowing seed that's that's literally becoming uh, uh, tares and, and becoming weeds that are that can get into your thinking, get into your psyche, get into your mind, get into your soul, and they can literally begin to shape the way you think and begin to mold the way you think. And that's why Satan is absolutely uh, bent on on uh, on getting his ideas and his thoughts into the world today through movies, through music. Let's look at another, a few other uh, verses of Scripture with this word imagination. Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 19. It came to pass when he heareth the words of this curse that he bless himself in his heart, saying, I have, I shall have peace though I walk in the imagination of my heart to add drunkenness to thirst. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 17. At that time, they shall call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord, and all the nations shall be gathered unto it to the name of the Lord to Jerusalem. Neither shall they walk any more after the imagination of their evil heart. Are you listening, folks? The Lord is going to set up his throne in Jerusalem. Now, I recently found the reason why that uh, this radical uh, sect of, of Islam today are calling themselves ISIS. And that's because ISIS is the seat or the throne are you listening? The seat or the throne, the power behind Horus. The power that's behind the Antichrist is Isis. Are you listening? That's what the word Isis actually means. The name Isis or the title Isis means a throne, a seat. I believe the power, the seat of, the, of, of Satan is going to be the Antichrist. The embodiment of Satan will be through the Antichrist. And his seat is going to eventually be in Jerusalem. He's going to show himself that he's God. And I, folks, I believe we're there. I believe we're in the hour where this throne, where this seat, where we're seeing uh, Islam, uh, not all of Islam, but this radical beast-like um, elite uh, of Satan that are literally uh, gaining ground and taking over the whole world. And please understand, it's not just radical Islam. It's all of the radicals in this world today that are not following Jesus Christ. And that are not for life, but for murder. Um, you know, there's just so many other things to share, but it's so easy to get off track. It really is. Let me let me read a few more of these scriptures to you. Jeremiah 16, verse 12. And you have done worse than your fathers. For behold, you walk every one after the imagination of his evil heart, that you may not hearken unto me. And uh, I want to read one, uh, one uh, more, uh, two more scriptures. Uh, Jeremiah twenty three seventeen. They say still unto them that despise me, the Lord has said, ye shall get, ye shall have peace. And they say unto every
in your set. What's more at stake is more than a small country. It's a big idea. Satan has a big idea. He's got a thought. And he is got those on the earth that are incubators that are literally conceiving that thought and they're bringing it to fruition. Are you listening, folks? So what do we do? How do we stand against it? Well, we know it's going to happen. Can't stop it from happening. But you and I, think of it this way. You and I can't stop the birds from flying over our head, right? But we can stop them from building a nest. Amen? They may mess on us once in a while, but they can't build a nest if we don't let them. We'll never stop the fiery darts of the enemy at our own. Quench the fiery darts of the enemy. They're flying, folks. They are flying. They're coming out of every area, every media outlet right now. The, this big idea, a world government, Babylon, is being set up. The beast is setting up his kingdom. The Antichrist is setting up his kingdom. It's already, everything's being put in place. Now it's time to stand. Now it's time to come out from among them and be separate. We should not give ourselves to this idea. We need to guard ourselves against this idea. Never allow anything that's contrary to the Word of God to begin to corrupt your mind. Don't let those thoughts come in. Guard yourself against those thoughts. Reject those thoughts. Cast those thoughts down. Amen? The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Remember, when an idea, a thought from Satan gets into your mind and it's conceived in you, it can become a stronghold. And if you don't get free of that stronghold, you're going to be in trouble. That stronghold's got to be broken. The better thing is to not let it become a stronghold at all. But if you've got a thought or an idea that's already become a stronghold in your mind, it's going to take the truth. It's going to take the power of God to break that thing. And listen, the Bible says you have to cast it down. You have to reject it. You have to demolish it with the truth, with the Word of God. You've got to love the truth more than anything else. And that's the only way you can be free. Love the truth. You've got to embrace the truth. The truth is not just words in a book called the Bible. The truth is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He is the truth. We must embrace him. He's the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said, you search the scriptures. In them you think you have life. But they are they that testify of me. He said, but you will not come to me that you might have life. They search the scriptures. There's a lot of people today searching the scriptures. Even the wicked are searching the scriptures. Even the devil searches the scriptures. But they won't come to Jesus. Those that follow Satan, they won't come to Jesus. That's the difference, folks. You and I come to Jesus. You and I embrace Jesus. You and I love Jesus. And Jesus makes us free. Amen? Don't give your imagination, your, your mind over to evil thoughts. God bless you.